Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we're going to start uh, the next uh, region, the lower limb. Now before we actually start the first bone, which is the hip bone, uh, let's see uh, and uh, just an introduction to the arrangement of the various regions of the lower limb. So we can divide the lower limb into six regions. Um, the lower limb is specialized for locomotion and for weight bearing. And we can divide it into six different regions, which would be the gluteal region, the femoral region, the knee, leg, the ankle region, and the foot. Now the gluteal region is a transitional region and um, it is only pe uh, present um, posteriorly and laterally. Uh, this transitional uh, region is not present anteriorly or medially and uh, this is mainly composed of the posterior rounded contour of the buttock and laterally the lateral hip region. Now the femoral region or the thigh is primarily made up of the uh, femur and um, post uh, approximately um, it has the gluteal the abdominal and the perineal regions and distally it has the knee. So after the femoral region we have the knee. Now the knee is made up of the condyles of the femur, the condyles of the tibia and the patella. Uh, the fibula here does not take part in the knee joint and uh, the main purpose of the fibula is to uh, provide an area for the attachment of muscles in this region and it also takes part in the ankle joint. So this part here, this region here is known as the leg region, right? And primarily it is made up of the tibia and the fibula. After the leg, we have the ankle region, also called as the talocrudal region, because this ankle joint is also known as the talocrudal joint. And um, after the ankle, we have the last region of the lower limb known as the foot. This here is the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle is a bony ring which is composed of the sacrum and the two hip bones on either side. So these two hip bones are connected posteriorly to the sacrum and anteriorly to each other via the uh, pubic symphysis. The pelvic girdle attaches the free lower limb to the axial skeleton and uh, the sacrum here is common to both the axial skeleton and to the pelvic girdle. Right, so this uh, diagram here shows the transfer of body weight. Um, so the weight is transferred vertically downward, straight down via the vertebral column. Here you will have the sacrum and these represent the sacroiliate joints. So the weight from the axial skeleton is transferred via the sacroiliate joints to the pelvic girdle. From the pelvic girdle, the weight is transferred further downwards through the hip joint here to the femur. <clears throat> now the femur in, is um, placed obliquely. It is directed infro medially and the reason for that is um, that uh, this would then place the knees directly underneath the weight of the uh, underneath the body right and so the knees are placed directly inferior to the trunk and this um, helps balance the weight so from the knees uh, from, from the knee here, the weight is then transferred via the tibia to the ankle joint and from the ankle, the weight is transferred to the foot. In the foot, the bones are arranged in such a manner that they form bony arches within the feet. And uh, the purpose of these arches is that they not only provide a much better balance, but they also provide uh, shock absorption. 